We're going to go over to the next speaker. I'll uh, introduce her in English in a minute, but just a word or two about the organization she works for. It is called Badil in Arabic, which is alternative in English. This is a resource center for Palestinian residency and refugee rights. It is uh, uh, in Bethlehem. The Badil organization is a partner to Zohrot in uh, the uh, thinking about the rights of Palestinians and the issues that have to do with the practical uh, aspect of the return for quite a few years. So allow me to call upon the next uh, speaker in English. I would like to invite uh, Maya Elorza, a uh, political science and international relations graduate, graduate from LSE, London School of Economics and Political Science. She holds a law degree from the uh, Complutense University of Madrid. She has been working as a legal researcher at Badil, Resource Center for Palestinian Residency and Refugee Rights, for the past three years to the present. Maya will present in 20 minutes, okay, uh, an informative introduction about the current situation of the Palestinian refugees today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As Omar said, um, I'm here today from Badil. Badil, it's a Palestinian human rights organization based in Bethlehem, and it's mandated to protect and promote the rights of Palestinian refugees and internally displaced persons. So as Badil, we seek to promote both individual and collective rights of refugees and IDPs based on international law, especially international human rights law. So, oh wait, Omar, I need the presentation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, as Omar said, uh, today I will be talking about uh, Palestinian refugees and internally displaced persons, um, where they are today, how they live, their legal situation, and their protection. Most of the information I will give you today is uh, collected in this book. It's uh, one of Badil's latest publications, the Survey of Palestinian Refugees and Internally Displaced Persons. You can find it outside later if you're interested. So this survey um, focuses on the period between 2013 and 2015, and it contains information uh, from historical background to current situation of Palestinian refugees, their legal status, and finally a questionnaire we made. I will give you information about the questionnaire later. Um, but before going into the details about refugees, um, it's important to understand that even if I'll give you current information, the refugees 
the displacement of refugees, it didn't just happen in 1948. This is not an isolated incident. It's an, the displacement of Palestinian refugees is an ongoing process. So as you can see in this map, in green, at the far left, we can see um, historic Palestine before 1948. And then we can see the evolution of the Palestinian land, how it's been you know, decreasing in size. Whenever a piece of land goes from green to white, it means a displacement has taken place. So as you can see, the displacement of Palestinians has been ongoing since before 1948, when the first Palestinians were displaced until today. In 2016, we've had Palestinians who became internally displaced persons or refugees. So Palestinian refugees, um, at the moment at least, are the largest and longest standing uh, refugee population in the world. Because of this ongoing process of displacement that we just saw in the map, 66% um, of Palestinians today are internally displaced. Uh, are displaced. Sorry. Um, from those 60% of Palestinians, we're talking about 12 million Palestinians in the world today. From those 60% are refugees, and 6% are internally displaced persons. So only 34% of the Palestinian people have never been displaced. These uh, refi Palestinian refugees and internally displaced persons um, belong to different groups. So the biggest group, let's say, is that of uh, Palestinian refugees who were displaced, forcibly displaced from their homes in 1948. Uh, from that group of uh, refugees, who are 6.1 million, 5.1 million managed to get registered as refugees with UNRWA, which is the United Nations um, Agency for Palestinian Refugees. There's a further 1 million Palestinians who were expelled from their homes in 1948, but they never managed to get registered. So until this day, they are unregistered. Later, in 1967, we have another massive wave of displacement and uh, 1.1 million Palestinian refugees uh, are displaced today from 1967. So these are refugees who were displaced in 1967 and their descendants. Another group that we can see in the graph in purple are internally displaced Palestinians inside Israel. So these are the Palestinians who remained inside Israel after its creation, but were displaced from their original homes. So today they number 300,000 uh, people. And um, as uh, Ilan Pape said before, until today they haven't been allowed to go back to their homes. So they're allowed to visit them, but they're not allowed to live in them. And finally, we have internally displaced uh, Palestinians inside the OPT, which is inside the Gaza Strip, East Jerusalem, and West Bank, which today they number around 334,000 Palestinians. Uh, this number increased dramatically in 2014, where following the war on Gaza. And until today, there's over 100,000 Palestinians who remain displaced inside Gaza. Um, connected to the ongoing displacement of Palestinian refugees, uh, it's important to know that not only there's new Palestinians being displaced, but also Palestinians who were displaced in the past continue to suffer from displacement. So, for instance, today in the context of the war in Syria, where over 500,000 Palestinian refugees lived, um, more than 80,000 have been displaced, at least 80,000 have been displaced outside the country. So they, were, they became refugees once again. Then in total, over almost 300,000 Palestinian refugees are internally displaced within Syria. So many of the Palestinian refugee camps in Syria have been destroyed, as was mentioned before, and most of those Palestinian refugees have not managed to leave the country, so they are still internally displaced within Syria. Now, regarding Palestinian refugees, we also have... Um, some facts uh, about them. As I said before, 66% of Palestinians are displaced. 60% of them are refugees. What many people don't know is that the majority of these refugees live within 100 kilometers of the borders of historic Palestine, which means like we can find the majority of them 
if we take a car right now and we drive one hour or two, we could probably meet like the great majority of these Palestinian refugees who have not been able to visit their own homes for 67 years. Also, like, um, there is sometimes a conception of Palestinian refugees as uh, only those who live in camps. However, the reality is that the majority of refugees do not live in camps anymore. There's 58 uh, official refugee camps, Palestinian refugee camps in Gaza, West Bank, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria. But uh, just a minority, I think it's around 30% of Palestinian refugees live in those camps. The others, you know, they move to cities, to towns, and they live together with other residents in whatever country they are. Um, around 40% of Palestinian refugees live um, in Jordan today. It's the country that hosted the biggest number of Palestinian refugees, especially uh, both in 1948, but especially in 1967 is when the majority of Palestinians who were displaced moved to Jordan. Gaza has a 25% of Palestinian refugees. The majority of Gaza's population are refugees. West Bank has 16%, Syria 10%, although now the numbers might have you know, like decreased, and Lebanon has around 9%. Now, before moving on to the results of the questionnaire, I would like to kind of give you an idea of uh, what is protection in the context of Palestinian refugees. Protection, uh, legally speaking, it's, uh, as you can see here, uh, it encompasses all activities aimed at obtaining full respect for the rights of the individual in accordance with international law. This includes uh, physical uh, safety, in which we could uh, include humanitarian assistance. It includes the recognition of uh, the rights, especially human rights. And it also includes the search for a durable solution to their displacement. Um, Palestinian refugees suffer from what is known as a protection gap. And this protection gap comes from a um, separate protection regime established internationally for Palestinian refugees. So the United Nations uh, created two agencies, um, let's say to take care of Palestinian refugees. One was UNRWA, uh, which was mandated to provide the humanitarian assistance to Palestinian refugees, which it does until today. The other one was called UNCCP. It's the United Nations Conciliation Committee for Palestine. This agency was mandated to search for durable solutions for all Palestinians. In, within these durable solutions, we include the right of return. This agency has been inactive since 1952. Although it still exists until today, it, it has no activities. It doesn't, in practical terms, it doesn't exist. This left a gap in protection for Palestinian refugees because since 1952 there is no international agency responsible to provide protection for Palestinian refugees. Every other refugee in the world is protected by UNHCR. UNHCR provides both humanitarian assistance and protection. Palestinian refugees were excluded from this regime and they were given two separate agencies, one of which has you know, ceased to operate. Therefore, until today, Palestinians are not protected by an international agency. This UNRWA provides humanitarian assistance, but there is no agency mandated internationally to protect the rights of Palestinian refugees or to search for durable solutions. UNRWA, for instance, does not have the mandate to negotiate with governments, with host governments of Palestinian refugees. It's not mandated to push or to advocate for the right of return, for example, for Palestinian refugees. So, because we believe in Badil that this protection gap, it's uh, to address this protection gap and to raise awareness about this protection gap is essential, uh, in this survey that we conducted, we included a questionnaire. So this questionnaire was done to over 3,000 Palestinian refugees in the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, Jordan, and Lebanon. We wanted to access Syria as well, but because of the situation, we were not able to conduct any questionnaires there. So basically, most of the questions in this questionnaire revolve around protection. We were very interested to see the perception Palestinian refugees have about protection, whether they know what's protection, whether they know which protection they're entitled to, whether they're aware of the protection gaps we mentioned, and which paths they 
would prefer to achieve a durable solution. So now I'm going to give you a brief overview of the results of this questionnaire that was conducted in March, April of last year, so a year ago. Um, So here, um, in this graph, we can see the um, basically the knowledge Palestinian refugees claim to have about protection. So as you can see, the complete knowledge is the blue. We can see that only a minority of Palestinian refugees claim to have full knowledge of the protection they're entitled to. Then the greater majority said so they had partial knowledge, they had some knowledge, and then like, on average, one third of them said they had no knowledge. If we talk in general terms, not per area, 67% said they had partial knowledge. Six, only 6% 6 of Palestinian refugees claim to have full knowledge of their protection. What does this mean for us? The way we understood, the way we understand this is that if these Palestinians enjoyed full protection, if they were provided with protection, we believe they will have a better understanding of what protection means. At the same time, if they had access to protection, uh, to seek protection, if they were aware they're not receiving the protection they're entitled to, but they had procedures to seek this protection, they would also have a better understanding of what protection is. So what these results show us is that these Palestinians are not receiving the protection they're entitled to. And not only they're not receiving it, they're not aware of what protection they're entitled to. And therefore, it leaves them in a situation of, you know, complete lack of protection. Before, um, we also asked these uh, Palestinian refugees about what were in their lives the main protection gaps they suffer from. So we asked them to answer this question both in individual terms as to which protection gaps they affect them the most individually speaking on which protection gaps they think affected their area the most. So as we can see, we have the list of the top 10 protection gaps uh, of Palestinian refugees. The main one, both in general and uh, in each area, was the lack of humanitarian assistance. This was highlighted as the main protection gaps Palestinian refugees suffer from. Number two was political discrimination. This was especially high in the Gaza Strip. In the Gaza Strip, both lack of humanitarian assistance and political discrimination were highlighted as the main protection gaps. Lack of employment opportunities was also a big protection gap. Uh, formal discrimination between refugees. This is something that takes place in Jordan, especially where Palestinian refugees who were displaced in 1948 and Palestinian refugees who were displaced in 1967 are treated differently. Palestinian refugees originating from the West Bank, for example, and originating from the Gaza Strip are treated differently. Um, in Jordan as well, um, lack of equal employment opportunities was highlighted as one of the main protection gaps. Palestinians in general inside Jordan, even though they are more than half the population of Jordan, uh, they suffer from discrimination in many aspects of their lives, and equal you know, employment opportunities was marked as one of their main protection gaps. Um, both in West Bank and Lebanon, on top of the lack of humanitarian assistance, one of the main protection gaps that was um, highlighted by the people we surveyed was the lack of security in the camps. Uh, we have to take into account that we carried out this questionnaire in refugee camps only, because it is not easy to identify refugees outside uh, the camps. So amongst the people we surveyed, uh, in the West Bank 70% and in Lebanon 75%, said that lack of security in the camps where they live in was one of, the, one of their main concerns. Uh, military incursions are common, police incursions are common, night arrests, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, and finally, uh, another question we asked in the questionnaire, which is perhaps like the most juicy question, was, um, we gave them, we gave these uh, Palestinian refugees a set of paths to achieve a durable solution, and we asked them to choose their preferred paths. Um, so this is the results we came out with. As we can see, 51% of the three over 3,000 Palestinian refugees that we surveyed, 
marked uh, the BDS campaign as one of their main paths to achieve a durable solution to the refugee issue. The second choice was security sanctions on Israel. Uh, the third one was going to the International Criminal Court. This is probably connected to the recent accession of uh, Palestine, the state of Palestine, to the International Criminal Court. The fourth option was uh, using other forms of resistance. The fifth option was reforming the PLO. Six, expanding the mandate of UNRWA. In this case, we mean, as I explained before, because Palestinian refugees suffer from a gap in protection. It will be expanding the mandate of UNRWA, which currently only provides humanitarian assistance, to also incorporate protection within their activities. The seventh was uh, convening an international conference, and then we have the negotiations and finally reactivating the UNCCP. Now, something that you know was clear from these results was the complete rejection of Palestinian refugees of the negotiations track that we've you know, witnessed for the last 24 years. It had really, really little support, especially both in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. It was less than 3% who marked this as a potential path to a durable solution. We also feel from the results, especially if you look at the top three, which are BDS, Security Council sanctions, and the ICC, they're both connected to the international community. So we feel that this shows kind of a willingness of Palestinian refugees to, internal, to internationalize issues revolving uh, Palest around Palestinian refugees. Like they hope or they have put trust in the international community to kind of intervene for once and for all to, to kind of start taking real actions on the ground to achieve a durable solution. Or perhaps it could also show dissatisfaction with the current, you know, like status of with the current international community's failure to actually bring about change in the ground. And this was a call from Palestinian refugees to the international community saying like this, we trust these paths. It's time, you know, for the international community to actually, you know, start using them as well. Um, and finally, we have a set of uh, recommendations as Badil. Uh, after analyzing these results, after analy analyzing the current um, data that we showed in the survey, the numbers, the, the worsening situation of the conditions of Palestinian refugees, especially the situation in Syria, has highlighted, you know, the the conditions, the vulnerability of Palestinian refugees in their host countries. But the situation, what's happening in Syria, especially with Palestinian refugees, is not something new. Palestinians have suffered from secondary displacement many, many times in the past. They were expelled from Kuwait, they were expelled from Jordan, they were expelled from Libya. This is not something that is happening now for the first time. Actually, from the people we surveyed in the questionnaire, from the 3,300 Palestinians we surveyed, 35% of them had suffered, had been displaced more than three times in their lives. And 10% of them had been displaced twice. So we're talking that these people were displaced in 1948 and two more times after that. And this is quite common amongst Palestinian refugees. Um, so after analyzing this, after analyzing the results of the questionnaire, the lack of knowledge of Palestinian refugees of the protection they're entitled to, the protection gap, the inaction of the international community, their preferred path to a durable solution. We believe that um, some of the steps to be taken are first and foremost to adopt and support a rights-based durable solution as a long-term strategy for Palestinian refugees. So whatever path is chosen, it needs to be based on um, international law and both international communities, states, UN bodies, and all duty bearers should embrace, you know, a path based on international law, a rights-based approach. Um, it is also very important to ensure effective protection of Palestinian refugees and IDPs and all those at risk of forced displacement in Palestine and in host countries. Uh, protection, as I explained, it incorporates basically everything connected to the life of refugees as refugees. And it is very important, especially in the case of Palestinian refugees, to raise awareness about the, the gap in protection they suffer from. 
And finally, and it is very important, and it is connected to you know, the conference we're having today, is to ensure and facilitate the, the participation of refugees and IDPs in decision making for their future. So Palestinian refugees and IDP communities should be involved in the decision making, should be involved in crafting solutions and identifying the protection gaps, as we did in the questionnaire. They have to be consulted if we want to achieve a durable solution for their cause. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>